gross. Welcome to Hammer and Steel Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing this flail made by Get Dressed for Battle. Before we get started, we want to thank our sponsors, WeaponMasters.com, for supplying this weapon. Without their support, none of these reviews would be possible. Now, I am not the biggest fan of flails. I will just say it right out loud. They kind of scare me. Um, and so, with that being said, I'm going to start suiting up for this review. The flail is an interesting weapon as there is very little evidence of it actually being like widely used in battle. It's thought that it was more of a, a peasant's weapon that was glamorized in like uh, text or in illuminations. The issue that I find with a flail is it's rebounding and that is most definitely why I'm wearing these today. <laughs> I'm gonna protect my hands today. Interesting is you can get a flail like this from a rent fair for like $45, something like that. These flails have an inherent flaw though in them, and here it is. It's not right into my hand. <laughs> That's super dangerous. I would not want to do that without my gauntlet on. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> now the argument is said that you have to keep them going at all times, but that gets quite difficult when you hit something. They like to do this thing called rebounding, where the heads rebound in the direction, opposite direction of which they enter the item. This makes it really hard for something like this to be adequate. That is another issue with these $45 uh, flails is they are not constructed in a way to actually be used that teeny tiny little head was not very much i barely got that moving it did not leave a scratch on that helmet which has seen better days for sure and just that little amount of action there <laughs> there you go so if you buy one of these little flails here, do not use them. They will break. This little jump ring here at the top just open just so easily. So be careful. Know your weapon. This, the, these, these inexpensive weapons, oh, they, they, are, they are so fragile and meant to just hang on your wall. You can tell by the way they were smacking me in the hand and just two swings and both of the balls came off. That makes me quite nervous. The other flail on the other hand, throw that to the ground, has something that I, uh, um, I'm okay with. That's why I'm gonna review this one is, oh, it misses my hand. Not by much, but it misses my hand. But every single one of these rings have either been welded or riveted together. Uh, it makes me a lot more uh, certain that when I strike something, it's not gonna just go rebounding off in the middle of nowhere and uh, cause a ton of damage. So uh, we'll, we'll review that more. Right now I'm gonna get um, my helmet on because this is a dangerous weapon. All right, we're clipped in. So I'm gonna wear this helmet today. Uh, it's a Really cool helmet, I love this helmet. <laughs> it's very snugly fit. So uh, I'm gonna do some hits with it just on the metal, on the, the helmet, a couple on the shield, and then I'm gonna do some without the helmet on the ballistics head. Um, and uh, we'll see what kind of damage we get, what kind of uh, injury there is, um, and I'll, I'll give it a pretty good swing because I feel like I'm gonna be protected enough to not sustain damage. Let's get the gauntlets on and we'll go. All right, here we go. Oh man, makes me nervous. <laughs> All 
But I think I hit it in the side of the face. I don't think I got it where I think I got it. You know what? We're gonna do this. I can't see anything. And, hi! Oh! That's more like it. So again, it kind of did some not very deep damage. It didn't dent the helmet very much. Um, felt like a lot of kinetic energy was rebounded out. But let's uh, take the let's take this off. Okay. I'm gonna try to hit him as close to the cranium as possible. So here we go. Oh, it's not doing nothing. So I'm not quite sure what happened. Hit him, but didn't seem to do much damage. All right, try to. Uh, I want to get a better grip, but I don't want to smash my fingers at the same time. <laughs> okay. Now, that just did not do very much damage. <laughs> Makes me wonder if this was more of like a distractionary weapon. Because if you got hit in the face like that, you definitely would have scarring, bruising, and probably some crushed bones. But I don't know if you'd be like dead. And I gotta hit it right on the cranium. I gotta get one that's right there real hard. <sighs> That's what I was worried about. Ugh. All right, there we go. Okay, so that one, that one did, that one did go into the, the, the skin and into the head. It cut into the skull a little bit, but the skull is full of blood. And the fact that it's not oozing blood is telling me, well, when we lost some inside the skull itself. But it's also telling me that these have a hard time causing tons of damage. Now that would, <laughs> that would have definitely taken you out of the fight though. You would have been incapacitated, but I still don't know about dead. I mean, you would have probably suffered a, a, a pretty bad head injury though. Um, so it does cause damage for sure. My issue was the way that I got that strike was an overhead strike. And when I missed the first time, the, the flails went between my legs and one actually hit me in the ankle and it hurts right now. <laughs> so it caused damage to me to get that strike. And I just don't know if the trade-off is worth the strike versus the danger to me. So uh, I'll continue. I'll try to get one into the forehead. Yeah, like that. Uh, got him in the nose and cheek. Uh, the, the cheekbones got crushed a little bit. Cheekbone got crushed a little bit. Let's jacking him up. And it makes me wonder if you wouldn't have used this at first and then pulled out something like this and pulled out the rondel dagger they come in and just ah! <laughs> uh, 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. I mean, uh, so that, that's kind of a hard, uh, the amount of danger associated with using that weapon versus the amount of danger associated with using that weapon was much more mitigated, much smaller. And so I was able to do more damage. This, 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 this would have been a killing blow. He would have been out with a, in the, yeah. Woo, got blood all over it. So if I had to come into the Ike, yeah. So, uh, like I like the flail. It's a cool weapon, but I think it does not need the uh, recognition. <laughs> people love the flail, that's the hard part. And people love it because it goes around the shield. And I, I understand that argument. I do understand that argument. But I'm also thinking of texts like Talhofer or Lixenauer or Mayer or any of those other instructors. When they're showing fight manuals, generally the shield is far away from you. So the amount of damage you're going to receive most likely will be your hand, your hand far away from you. And I can see that as being a viable uh, target to attack, of course, but it's not gonna cause enough damage to take you out of the fight. And if you're able to deflect and you know, completely alter the trajectory of the guy's strike with the flail, uh, makes it extremely difficult to rebound from when you have the flail. Now, I have seen flails where they're on a long stick and it's meant to go around the shield like that. That is, that is totally viable. Flail itself, I think would only been a last ditch effort type of weapon because I'm just not convinced it, it does the damage that is necessary in a battlefield. I think it is more of like, I have a little bit of material at my disposal what kind of weapon can I make that will do anything? And this, this is a wheat thrasher or corn thrasher. Corn didn't exist at that time. Corn just means uh, any of the uh, kernel of a, of a wheat, a wheat or grain or grain a cereal, I think they, they call it. And so they use these to separate the, the corn or the kernel from the chaff or the, 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 the stems and other bits that are not desired to eat. And so it makes a great farming implement. I'm just not quite convinced that it makes a good weapon. I mean, I struck it multiple times and it just didn't seem to do much. I'll try like a backhand, like a, oh, across the, oh, jeez. So that did cause a cut, like a, a cut about two inches wide into the skull itself. Just, just isn't doing the damage that I was hoping it would do. I, I was hoping it would cause this large cavity and there'd be blood everywhere and it would be an awesome shot and it would go every, it would go viral. <laughs> it's just not doing that. <sighs> I'm, and I'm not sure if it's because the flail ends are too light. There's no spikes on them. I'm not sure. Or if I'm just not swinging them correctly. Oh, okay, let's give this a try. It makes me super nervous. Because I know while wearing the gloves, I had them clack into my, th my thumb and my back of my hand and my fingers. Uh, almost every strike. So doing this without a glove uh, makes me super nervous. Uh, so here we go. Okay. Okay, this is interesting though. Okay, so the trauma, the trauma from the balls hitting caused this side of the head to rupture into the skull. So what that tells me is there's significant amount of damage that you would have sustained neck damage you would have sustained some damage into the bottom of your skull from the whiplash effect unless you're wearing a helmet like this one that there's too much support around my neck for that kind of strike to be super effective it would have caught up on 
the side of my helmet in the Advent Hell. You know what? This frustrates me. I wanted to see more blood. I mean, that's what I came here for, right? I came here for blood. <laughs> this is the windless Arbeto. We came here for blood. This just was not giving us what we needed. Uh, I was expecting so much more, especially since we let some of the blood ooze out underneath the ballistics gel between the skull. I was hoping that it would act more like an actual uh, skull where most of the blood is between the skull and the head, but it didn't act like that. So I'm gonna take this Arbeto and I'm gonna cause some damage. <laughs> Yeah, blood all over that thing. So with the skull off now, I can see that the, uh, I can see that that actually did cause some cr cranial damage, some cranial crushing. Ooh, gosh. So though it might not have been this spectacular blood spurting gooey, disgusting mess we were hoping for it might have still killed you you might not have seen the outward effect you might not have seen the lacerations and the deep wounds but the internal damage you might have seen swords just kind of open you up so that's that's my conclusion is most most likely deadly in a perfect scenario um, but finicky, dangerous to the user. And I, and I feel like the trade-off is just not worth it. I, I think it would be much safer to just have the weighted end on the end of the stick, like a mace. That's much safer, much more controllable. And uh, even though you lose the whipping action of the flail, uh, I, I think the amount of energy you lose is negligible enough to say it's worth losing that energy to make sure that I can keep my agility and not get my fingers. So my conclusion would be that yes, swords and axes and many other weapons are gonna be much more uh, effective, much more able to get the job done. If you're a poor peasant and have nothing other than a chain, some little chunks of metal and a stick, there you go, you're gonna wanna flail. I think they looked a lot different back then. I think they were on longer sticks. I think the flail only had like two or three rings on it. Didn't have all this loss of control in the very... The issue, you just lose so much ability to control it. And people say, you gotta just keep it moving, just gotta keep it moving. I was like, but well, that movement doesn't make you a very uh, effective fighter because if I'm fighting you with my shield, I'll make sure that my shield gets in the way of your continual flailing, and I will make sure that whatever I do will counter your shield. It's all I have left to counter. So, do people think that flails are viable and very good? I, I, I people do, and I'm not gonna, not gonna say they're outright wrong. I'm just saying that it's much harder to use something like this than say a stick with a piece of metal on the end. Uh, it would have probably more been more effective to just kind of shove those in there and hit them with the end of the stick. Now, of course, bringing out the sword was not fair. I wanted to see some gore, and I think it was gonna take too long with this guy to get to the point where he saw some gore. But it makes a good example between a knightly weapon and a peasant's weapon and i think this definitely is a peasant's weapon i don't think a knight would have used it i don't think they would have seen it as a viable option in their arsenal maybe if they had nothing else on a battlefield and they stooped down and the peasant had one on his hand and he just wanted to try one out if you're in a full suit of armor you're probably not going to be very afraid of most of the pitchforks and you know wooden weapons a farmer is going to have. So maybe you'll try one out, just kind of, hey, let's see what this does against the peasant. Bam! <laughs> so it is dynamic, it's exciting, and you know, honestly, 
I'll probably still keep it in my collection just as a talking point, as an interesting piece that I can say, hey, let's talk about the flail. Um, but when it comes to flails, make sure you get one that actually uh, can be demonstrated with. Couldn't even demonstrate with that cheap one. So that one's to just hang on your wall. If you ever want to demonstrate, at least get one that's been welded together like this Get Dressed, battle, or get dressed for Battle one. Uh, if you'd like to pick one of these up, I got mine at Weapon Masters. Right now they're offering all our viewers a discount of 10% if you use our promo code, which is HANDSVIEWER2021. With that promo code, you can check out with an entire order and get 10% uh, off on the entire order. Also, uh, make sure that you mention to your friends or in your groups or share this video because every single like, every single share helps, helps us get out there and uh, get our, inf our, our videos in front of people. We'd love to have more and more videos. Um, and as we grow our community, the more support, the better. Again, thank you so much for watching today. And as always, may all your days be filled with history. <laughs> Ooh, gross. All right, here we go.